Hi, this is Darren Lyle. In this part of the series, we'll work on finishing up the character's head here. What we need to do is work on pulling some points. You can see that when I pulled the points out, I've got this kind of angle, this very angular uh, shape to the face, and that's not exactly what we want. So I'm gonna begin pulling some points out here to try and round out the shape of the face. And it's um, relatively tedious work, <laughs> but um, needs to be done to get that nice curve to the face. And what I'm doing is just pulling points forward and back in the y-axis right now, just forward and backward, just to try and get that curvature of the face a little better. Then once I get that curvature, then I'll begin moving points in the in the x-axis as well. Now since this is a um, kind of a cartoony younger character, I'm going to work on bringing the cheeks forward some just to give that kind of baby fat look to the cheeks. And to get a better sense of how I'm doing, I think I'm going to add a subdivision modifier to this as well. So I'm going to click over here on the Modifiers tab and add a Subdivision Surface modifier. I'll also choose uh, Optimal Display, increase the view to 2, and turn on um, applying the modifier in Edit Mode as well. So I can see how the curvature of this is working out. I think I'm going to do a little more pulling of points here to kind of flesh out the cheeks and nose area a little more. And now at this stage as well, I think I can begin pulling points in the x-axis. Okay, we're getting there. I just want to check it out in the side view here. I think what I'll do is move these forward just a bit to match my drawings and we can also take a look at it in the front view see how we're doing here that looks pretty good alright I think we're ready to begin working on the rest of the head as we go we'll be pulling points and modifying it um, uh, constantly I think so might as well go ahead and move on now what we need to do is select the edges on the top of the brows here and begin moving them up and over the head um, even though there's a hat and clothes I'm gonna begin I'm gonna model the character as if um, there are none kind of modeling the base character and then I'll add clothes and things on top of that. I think what I'll do is turn off the subdivision modifier for now. And I'll go into edge mode and just begin selecting a few of these edges. And I'll move it into place a little bit. And I'll begin extruding them up and over the head. As I go I'm going to be widening these out just a bit and scaling them to make them a little more flat Now once I get up here to the top of the head, I'm going to begin rotating these edges just a bit. Now 
Now, once I get to this point, I'm going to begin thinking about how to connect these uh, pieces up. Um, let me move this into place. So let's think about this. If I've got this row of edges, I may want to hook them up in the future with this row of edges here, right? So it would probably be wise to now as I'm bringing these edges, as I'm extruding these edges down along the back of the head, be, to begin thinking about how they're going to connect to the front or to the face. So if that edge matches up with that one, maybe this edge matches up with the next one. And maybe this, uh, with there's another edge there. Now this edge that I've extruded down is a little wide for the character here. So I'm just gonna select this center point and press Shift S and choose cursor to selected. And then when I control drag to select those points, now if I change my pivot point to the 3D cursor, when I scale now, it will happen from that center point. So I'm going to scale these in just a bit to match the head. There we go. Now I'm going to work on connecting these up. Um, I think I can select these edges and extrude these and in the front view I better move these out to match the the width of the head here. I'm gonna scale these in so they're a little more flat like this and I also need to merge these points here kind of line these points up so they make a little more sense in the flow of things here. Now I'm going to do the same for this edge back here. Okay, so it looks to me like these this row of faces here will extend down between these two edges. And this row will extend down here. So let's try this. I think what I'm going to do is just test this. I'm going to select these four vertices and hit the F key. Same here. And now it appears that, yeah, I think I can extrude and extend these over here. And then merge these points. And after some point pulling, this is what the head looks like so far. Let's go back to the default view and see how it's looking. It's looking a little thin. I think it needs to um, widen out and curve out a, a little more on the, on the sides. One thing that um, I've found is that the default camera of 35 millimeters can be a little bit distorting. What I'm going to do is go to the properties panel here and scroll up to the camera lens under view. And instead of 35, I'm going to change this to 50. And I found that that, to me, seems to work a little better. So for this, I think what I'll do is um, use the proportional editing tool. That's right down here. And I think I'm going to, it really doesn't matter now if I choose enable or connected. I tend to use connected more. But the reason why it doesn't matter is because there's only one piece of geometry here. And if I click on a point and hit G for move, I can adjust the influence of the proportional editing tool with my mouse, with my mouse scroll wheel here. So here is my character with the 
drawing underneath and it's looking pretty good. So there are some issues here now with some pulling and stretching. There's some issues with uh, the curvature here of the forehead. But these are things that we can take care of fairly easily just with some judicious point pulling. Did I just say that? Judicious point pulling? Really? <laughs> um, so, so before the next video, I'm going to do some adjustment of the character here. And in the next video, we'll start working on the neck and some other parts of the character.